Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to explain some things in detail. I am a warlock, but I'm also one of the very very few whistleblowers on how to be a warlock. So I'm going to give you some tips, and this is something uh, you won't hear from somebody else who claims that they're that or something else or something even better than because there really isn't anything better than a fucking warlock on planet Earth. It's kind of like a conduit to extraterrestrials and stuff. So, I mean, why would you think there's anything better here? There isn't. There's nothing stronger on this planet. Now, there's a select few that are allowed to be warlocks. And it's not because they went to school, like in some movie or something. It's because they train themselves. A warlock trains himself on everything. He learns how to connect with other entities and stuff at an earlier age and then kind of manifest the qualities to do so later. And one of them is if you play music and you're able to make a cut. Now, I'm not saying I'm using my music to try to stay a warlock. I've already gotten past that crescendo. But the music I'm talking about is more of a primitive nature style. Warlocks can key into other realms using simple things like a flute and bongos. Okay? And uh, but you got to go out in the open air. You got to go outside. You got to go into the rural areas to do this shit. Now, when you get the flute or the bongos, or so, just keep it real simple because extraterrestrials don't want to see a giant performance. They just want to see that you have the capability to communicate. They have no interest in holding conversations. However, if you do make contact with an extraterrestrial, always make sure they know that you know you have your firewalls. Be careful. Right away, just let them know you are an uh, intelligent being as they are, but you're just from another place. Make sure you just state the case like that. Look, keep your distance. I don't know you kind of thing. It's kind of like a prude, but it's the way they respect you because they fight all the time. Other extraterrestrials and entities are all, always at war. There is no Michio Kaku theory behind any of their, their shit. Um, it's all about, uh, you know, who can gain, make gains. And to make gains, unfortunately, you just have to mow shit over sometimes. To be a warlock, you definitely need to mow shit over. And that is academia, traditional science, as you know it. <clears throat> so another thing uh, is once you establish what that other being, like from, let's say, playing music, in a, in a primitive format with bongos and a flute, if need be, or something similar, but just a couple of instruments, you'll be able to unlock some principal gates to understanding and intellectual knowledge outside of yourself. When I was younger, I did that with a friend and um, we, ritual, uh, we automatically made a ritualistic thing and stuck every kind of rock we could big ones small ones and stuck them all straight up and in a certain and if they were two dimensional looking rocks we'd make sure they were all facing a certain direction and we put them all up in the most obscure positions and balanced them all then we went up and we played the music now we weren't thinking okay we're going to unlock some magical gift but we were trying to if you will we're trying to just you know get a ufo to come but that part didn't happen, but what did happen might as well have been just as significant. Um, so we, we played this tune for like an uh, improvised tune for like 45 minutes and we left. Nothing special happened. We went home. The next day I brought a girlfriend out there. She Her name was Paula and she uh, just wanted to get laid and I was going to bring her out there to get her laid because I thought, why not? Because we just set all those rocks up and it's going to look really cool when I show her that shit first. Shut up. We'll go for a walk when I say so. But not anytime sooner. Even though I mentioned it several times, the dog needs to know. I'm not ready to go for a walk. So just realize it, okay? Realize it. Another thing, guys, even though I, sometimes my dog gets frustrated from anxiety, me and the dog get a good communication thing going. It knows that I'm going to leave when I leave. But it whimpers in the meantime because it wants to go outside now. That's a you know kind of a stubborn dog. But um, so anyway, make sure that uh, well anyway. So I brought her out there. Okay, let's just I don't know. I lost my train for a second. 
and it was starting to turn evening, all of a sudden lightning started smacking everywhere. I mean, when I say smacking everywhere, it was like we were in a area where it was just super electrically charged. And there was lightning just every five, 10 feet. I mean, it seemed like five, 10 feet, but it wasn't necessarily right where we were at because we were in a car, but it was maybe 20 feet out, 30 feet out. But nonetheless, if you were to go out of the car and try to walk through that shit, it would be a rainstorm of lightning bolts. So I, I told her, I said, man, this is insane. I can't even go over and look at the rocks I wanted to show you. I couldn't even get a heart on because of that. I was actually concerned a little bit. You know, the lightning was way too rampant. So uh, anyway, long story short, I went home years later, maybe even years later, I started thinking about it more and more. And I realized what happened there. by putting the rocks like we did and then playing the tune for 45 minutes, we unlocked an entity. Um, when I say we unlocked an entity, it's kind of like a video game. You unlock to the next level. Well, that's what happened. The entity wasn't interested in direct communication like we know it, but it definitely let me know, hey, you did a good job. And it gave me a lightning show. Um, so, and it wasn't the kind of lightning show you go walk out in either. It was, it was like, if I did, maybe it would avoid, all the lightning strikes would avoid me to go over to the rocks, but it started pouring down rain too, so I didn't do it. But the crescendo of this story, or the, well, the meaning of it is, you know, um, that's how you become a warlock. Now, it doesn't mean back then I figured all that out. No, it took years later to figure that shit out, that we unlocked something. Now, that particular person that I did that with, we also had a UFO encounter. And that got really deep, and I could go into detail on that. And I already have, um, so if anyone hasn't heard it, you can just request that I tell that story again. I try to leave out absolutely no details, as I always do, but... So, and there were two of them. We saw two UFOs in one night. So, and that guy disappeared. Okay, that person disappeared. Okay. Now, David may actually been a warlock as well. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, back then I just didn't, I, I may have came after him as far as warlocks go. I, I probably came after him because he, he seems like he was a warlock. Um, just by the identifying features, which is a warlock will also always seem like a covert spy, but they'll always act like they're, your, you know, your friend and stuff while they know you. But you can see that there's something else going on. Their curiosity is heightened. Their creativity is outside norm. And um, even though he was simplistic in nature, he's tribal in nature. And that was where I got that half of the respect from the entity because he was playing bongos or i mean flute i was playing bongos and so because he was of the tr primitive mindset and i was of a more advanced mindset it fucking awakened that entity so that entity has probably been with me for a while <coughs> for a long time uh, because uh it made friends with us that's basically what happened now did it do much more than a lightning show no because they don't communicate like we do. So you have to understand that they don't, uh, this is not some, you know, uh, you know, talking entity ghost or any of that bullshit. This is none of that shit. They don't talk English at all. They're, they're suburban, sub, they're uh, subordinate extraterrestrials do have the capability, but they don't either. Generally speaking, they have their own communication format, which is uh, infused actually to them so that they can take care of their business with us. See, the, the, the highest warlocks in this area, if you want to call it this area, which it's subjective, but the ones that congregate here, they're only, there's an only a limited amount of them here because this is actually a very rural area of the spiral arm in this universe. And, um, they only find interest in locations that have something they need. And it's a lot of people will say when I'm talking about stuff, they must, like humans, they must need them. No, they actually created us. They don't need us. Um, however, there is a minimal need for us for genetic reasons because they have to continue the, the stream, but it's minimalized on genetic levels. 
So they don't really have that extra in, uh, interest in us. And they're super highly developed. They're as close as to God you can get, uh, but there is no God. Remember, <clears throat> there is nobody who runs this universe. This is a burnt out husk. This is more or less an abandoned universe. But it has so much traffic in it from life forms that there's it's uh, from transit and so forth to get to other dimensions that there's no way to clean it up that way there's always going to be the life coming through here this spot part of the spiral arm is a hub as well so just being lucky enough to be a hub of the spiral arm is good enough and you will be able to try to become a warlock but you like i said you have to understand i got wet hair right now i'm trying to warm my neck up and see if that helps dry my hair back here too but in the meantime, like that matters, right? But just remember this, um, to get a another entity to come forth, uh, they will also, if they uh, respect the way you went about it, they'll also protect you in life. They will, uh, you know, I've had people say I've killed many people in other dimension, uh, using other dimensions, but actually it's the, the other, my protectors. It's uh, the people that I communicated with that are protecting me. Now, I've had people even before that that protect me. They, they take turns babysitting the warlocks. And that's how it is, guys. Um, make sure when you communicate with a warlock, you do it properly. Use the proper etiquette. Um, they're not trying to be entertained. However, if you do make a primitive style of uh, music and you only use a couple instruments, if not just one, and you use the right directives, like balancing all the rocks on a plateau up at a certain angle, straight up, and... Um, you will get their attention. 